Artisan Fleas with Ronan, the owner of Artisan Fleas. What's up, Ronan? What's going on? What's going Welcome on? Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> so tell me in your own words, what is Artisan Fleas? Sure. Well, a correction. My wife and I, my then girlfriend and I, started the market. So she's also she's technically a co-owner. And I want to give props to her. Right? Oh, co-owner. Okay. Um, what is Artisan Fleas? Artisan Fleas is a year-round weekend market um, where artists, designers, vintage collectors, budding entrepreneurs, food makers, and anyone with a collection, a cool eye for for something interesting, wants to come out and show and sell. Okay. And this is the place. This is one of the places to do it. This is the place in ways we can do it. How do you choose your, your vendors and people that sell things to you? I guess the way we pick our vendors, a lot of them ultimately self-select. They decide which market is for them. Um, we don't go out there and say, hey, we want this person at our market. We sort of believe that that uh, there obviously are some rules. There are certain people, that we, certain people who make certain things, import things that we don't necessarily welcome at this market. Mm -hmm. We certainly encourage them to go find a market for themselves. Um, but this is really about sort of what works in the neighborhood. So do you have like a background in fashion or marketing? Is that how the concept came about? Um, I like markets. I've traveled a lot. Amy, my wife, and I have traveled around the world a lot. And everywhere we go, we always go to markets. Markets, first and foremost for us, is sort of like the destination where we go travel. Because okay. it's the place where you can sort of experience the the local culture. Mm -hmm. um, in many ways, a market where you're coming face to face with people is, I think, the biggest equalizer yeah. um, of people. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, you can have two different people standing across from each other and transacting commerce or having conversations that they never would otherwise have. What were you doing before you opened up a flea market? <laughs> like, what did you, you just always wanted to do something like this? Uh, I always wanted to do something like this, but I never necessarily thought that I would. I had a job for, uh, for eight years running marketing for a telecom company and okay. Amy was in graduate school um, doing sort of career development, career counseling and now she works She works a lot with women entrepreneurs uh, okay. to help them start their businesses and grow their businesses. So, so it all worked out. You, you guys know, had the, the recipe. The, yeah, I mean, we also, business. you know, and, the, and we started the market at the time in 2003 as sort of a labor of love. Mm -hmm. It was a weekend project. It was fun. It was cool. It was a place for us to hang out. Um, the neighborhoods changed a lot, our lives have changed a lot, and for the most part the vendors and sort of the whole world of like people who make a living doing their own thing has really changed. So now a lot of people really rely on the market as their source of income and on their art. But I feel like even people who are somewhat well off, to me it seems like they're shopping at vintage stores or flea markets more now, or is that just a Williamsburg thing? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think that I think that people, people, you know, to the extent that what you own is defines who you are, and yeah. so trying to trying to express yourself uniquely, the the only way to do it is, you know, I mean, not the only way, but one way to do it is like through your possessions, through what you wear, and finding things that, you know, aren't available everywhere that aren't mass market for yeah. this, um, you know, makes vintage very appealing. What's your favorite thing about owning a flea market in Williamsburg? What's your, your the, is it the fact that you can just walk in and meet different people? Is it I don't know, the fact I don't that know. you have first dibs on buying stuff before anyone else does? I mean, I really feel that it's a part, it, for me, it's an opportunity to be part of a community. Mm -hmm. um, a community of business owners, of independent business owners, of people who are really invested in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, who are invested in sort of seeing the neighborhood grow and evolve. Um, but kind of on our own terms. Um, so for us, we had we had an opportunity to move the market at one point in time, and for us, we felt it was really important that we stay here. Yeah. Um, because we felt that we're that we're sort of part of the fabric. I was talking to my neighbor over here the other day, and he, and he's he's a photographer. I mean, he sells a bunch of pre 1950s electronics equipment. Okay. Um, That's different. And, we, and, and he's a photographer, and I, and we were talking about sort of like a Williamsburg then and now, and he's, he was showing me these photos of the waterfront that he used to take like in the early 90s, which is not a long time ago. Yeah. Of like people sitting on the piers, you know, one guy like polishing his gun, cleaning his gun, another person just sitting and reading their, their journal, you know, and he was like, he's like, I'm telling you, you know, there were prostitutes here, there were people shooting at tin cans, there were people like, you know, reading poetry and writing in their journals, and it was like a real random... You know, none of that. So yeah, not much of that happens. So Williamsburg has changed. Yeah, they changed. Right? <laughs> I also think that like what we're kind of experiencing now, um, you know, this sort of like Brooklyn state of mind. Yeah. Um, 
you know, that, that certainly goes beyond the borough, but the whole idea of like handmade, do-it-yourself, independent entrepreneurs, and entrepreneurs sort of sounds like a loaded term, but I think that every vendor in here is an entrepreneur, is a business owner. Mm-hmm. Uh, we really sort of work on like, on like cultivating like the creative class. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's markets where you can find a lot of food. There's markets where you can find a lot of furniture. There's markets where you can find a lot of wholesale stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and all those markets have a place. And I think, like, like we certainly, we're big believers that, like, the market is ultimately the biggest judge of what works and what doesn't. Well, I feel like there's kind of like a Brooklyn renaissance. Like, there's something happening in Brooklyn mm-hmm. that's not really happening anywhere else. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that there's, I think that there's this feeling of energy, of independence, of people sort of... Uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, shaping their own destiny or, or doing things on their own terms that mm-hmm. it, that feels very, you know, that kind of like roll up your sleeves attitude that feels very much at home here. To me, Williamsburg is a very unique neighborhood, especially in Brooklyn. It's unlike any other place in New York City. What would you say is special about Williamsburg as a neighborhood? Uh, I'd say that it is fiercely independent. Mm-hmm. It's creative. It's vital like there's an energy um, and it's always changing mm-hmm. the first time I set foot in Williamsburg was in 1996 I think yeah and I didn't know how to get here I didn't know where I was going someone said go pick up my car and it was like in some parking lot or like you know a, a back alley somewhere and now that's probably like a very nice I don't even know where it is I don't even know where it is they built like there. a sky rise uh, over it but I, hate, but I but I don't like to be one of those people that oh the neighborhood's changed so much you know yeah um, Everything yeah, is meant to evolve in yeah, a way. Yeah, I mean, things change. And, like, for us, it's important that we stay here and that we be part of, like, the changing neighborhood. If you could describe Williamsburg in three words, what would those three words be? Three words. Independent. Creative. And adventurous. People are willing to take chances here. Hi, I'm Cynthia. Uh, I am one of the founders of Fancy Sexy Me. Luxury with an attitude. Uh, we like doing high-end pieces, one of a kind, um, but with a little edge, a little twist. This is our statement necklace wall. Uh, we have the scarflesses. These are the best pieces. Um, this one is one of my favorites. This one's called the rib cage. Um, and some of the findings that I use are recreated from my grandfather's uh, collection. Artists at Please is special because you have all these great, unique vendors uh, doing what they love, making what they're selling. Um, we come here every weekend. For me, it's like a weekend home. I love everyone here. Um, we just come together and like share and sell our stuff. So it's really great. It's a community sense. So I'm Ignacio. This is Pamela with QP and Monty. And what's special about Artists and Fleas is the variety and flavor of the whole place adds to a great experience. There's food, there's music, there's, there are interesting people, there are interesting things. So you can always find something to do here. What's special about QP and Monty, however, is that we are a, uh, a lifestyle, a QP Emporium. So we have a little bit of everything for everyone. I specialize in men's clothing. She does women's jewelry and vintage pieces. I'm down to Artisan Fleas. We're here every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, so come on down.